Okay, we will continue with this variant uh, workbook question and let us look at the next part. It says, at any Pareto optimal where both people consume sum of each code, it must be that their marginal rate of substitution is equal. No matter what he consumes, Morris marginal rate of substitution is equal to minus one. So if you remember, um, his utility function was B plus W, right? And because it was B plus W, you will get the MRS as one, right? So his, so if I if I just go ahead and I put this negative sign along with it, I will get it as minus one, right? So when Philip consumes the bundle, his MRS is minus W uh, by B, and this is exactly uh, what we found out, right? So so if utility function of Philip is um, is B W, and um, if I have uh, you know, if I have, uh, let's say, W here and I have B here, so, so UP, uh, utility function of P, uh, P will be BW. So MRS is marginal utility B by marginal utility W. If I differentiate it with respect to B, I get W and with respect to W, I will get B. So it will be minus of uh, B, uh, W by B, right? Okay, so that's also right. Therefore, every Pareto optimal allocation where both consumer consume positive amount of both goods satisfies this equation. So you're supposed to equate this to the MRS of the, of the other individual, right? So this will be one. So this implies you will get W is equal to B. And actually, this will become your equation of the contract curve, isn't it? Okay, so now it says use black pen on the diagram above to show the locus of all Pareto optimal allocation. So if you notice, uh, if you notice, this is how my uh, uh, Edgeworth box was looking, right? And now I have to show all uh, Pareto optimal allocation and what are those Pareto optimal allocation where W is equal to B. Now, now if you notice, this is from the side of Philip, right? PP. So this is P, P, this is P, P. So I want to draw that line such that W, P is equal to B, P. So if I just go back to this, what is going to happen in this case? Let me just go ahead and remove this. We don't need this anymore. So I'm not going to, this was for part A. I'm just going to remove all of this for now. And now I want to draw this contract curve such that this equation is satisfied. So this equation says 10 equal to 10, 20 equal to 20, 30 equal to 30, and 40 equal to 40, right? So if you draw this line, this is your, this, this line, this is your contract curve, right? This is what your contract curve will be. W is equal to B. Now, here is the thing. See, see, you have to understand that, uh, oh, oh, this is from the side of Morris, sorry. I need to draw it from the side of Philip. Philip was on the y-axis, so it is going to be the reverse. So 10 equal to 10, 20 equal to 20 will be here. And then 30 equal to 30 will be here and 40 equal to 40 will be here. So this will be my contract curve. So you have to understand that all Pareto efficient points are going to lie on this contract curve. Money what? Once you have, uh, uh, once you find out the tangency points, like for example, for Morris, we know that his utility function was B plus W and for Philip, his utility function is uh, B into W, right? So if I draw a utility function from the point of Morris, um, it is going to be somewhere here, right? So, so these are the utility functions of Morris, right? Something like this, right? 
you you continue these right you you're making these you, you utility functions right so what do we have to ensure we have to ensure that um uh, we have to ensure that now we when when we make philips utility function they're tangent so let me use another color for it something like this these are the utility functions of philips and this tangency this is achieved along this contract curve are you getting it this is what this means that this is where you achieve this pareto efficiency okay so we have now been able to draw a contract curve okay now come to the next one at a competitive equilibrium it will be it will have to be that morris consumes some books and some wine but in order for him to do so it must be the case that ratio of prices of wine is therefore we know that uh, books uh, we make books the numerator then the price of wine in competitive equilibrium must be this is excellent question let's think about it i want to i want to spend some more time on this question so just think about this okay so so when i talk about when i talk about the utility function of morris the utility function of morris is given to me as b plus w right b plus w now just think about this the mrs as we found out will be 1 now we know the condition that if mrs is less than px by py you consume only good y in this case if mrs is less than pb by pw i will consume only wine if mrs is greater than pb by pw i will consume only books of course i know that mrs that i found out is 1 so i can just plug in 1 here i can just plug in 1 here so this gives me that if pw is less than pb i consume only wine and this gives me if pw is greater than pb i consume only books this is clear to us now if we think about it we must see that the question is asking when it will be possible that he consumes some books and some wines that is possible only when mrs is equal to the price ratio px by py in our case mrs between uh, bw should be equal to p b by p w mrs is 1 so i want the ratio to be equal to 1 and then it says that look we want that the price of so it says we want to make books numerator numerator means we are keeping the price of book as 1 so if i just keep the price of book as 1 what is the price of wine that i will get automatically i will get that one so if you don't keep it any if you don't keep anything numerator then the price ratio should be 1 otherwise we want that if you keep one of the goods price numerator that the price will automatically be 1 so the answer to this question is that it will be one here and one here is this clear to you okay so this is what i wanted to discuss in this video then in the next video i will discuss the next parts of this question thank you